Hi, I'm Mario Evan, and you're listening to Talk Trot, a weekly inspired entertainment podcast discussing the things that most people are afraid to, but from a Jamaican perspective. From relationships, sex and sexuality, to the ins and outs of entrepreneurship, in this space we speak about almost anything with the intention to inspire, educate, entertain, and create a fair and balanced space where your truth shall become your power and set you free. Welcome to episode 9 of Talk Truth. This is your boy Mario Evan and it's always a pleasure to be here with you every Sunday. Today we talk about a really important topic and it's so important that we've broken it into two parts. This is part one of a topic on financial freedom, not just financial freedom, personal financial freedom and my guest today is a man that i've dubbed the stock whisperer yeah i just came up with that so i hope it stays with him but you keep it locked because there's some really important tips and tidbits and cool little things going on in here and between the next two weeks we're going to be covering a whole bunch of really important stuff but before we get into podcasts i need to big up my sponsor for today's episode and it wouldn't be possible without them because this is where we recorded for this episode and those are our friends at The Hub Coworking and this is a place that you can go if you need a workspace. So many of us don't have somewhere where you can just go set up your laptop, have a board meeting, have a work address. There's so many services offered here and The Hub does it all. Um, some of the services include complimentary coffee, Wi-Fi, you have flexible membership plans, private offices, conference rooms, a meeting lounge. You even have a receptionist, printing, copying, scanning, and it's such a cozy little environment with a nice ambiance, cool artwork. So to find out more about The Hub, please visit their website at hubcoworkingja.com or give them a call at 876-831-2765 or 876-833-4612. Or guess what? Just go down there, go pay them a visit. 34 Lady Musgrave Road, unit number 18, Kingston 5. The Hub Coworking, working better together. Folks, this is episode 9 of Talk Truth, and I have with me none other than Randy T. Rowe. And guess what? A lot of you may not know him, but guess what? Today you are going to know him because he's going to be talking about something very important to all of us, and that is personal financial freedom. Um, Randy, welcome to Talk Truth, and tell me a bit about yourself. Thank you. So, hi everybody, I'm Randy. Um, as people know, people know me from social media, mostly Twitter, RT Euro. People always ask me what it, that stands for. Yeah, what's the T for? It's not rich, but T, trouble. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's my middle name. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave it for people to ask me in, in, in person. So, it's Randy T Euro, RT Euro. Right. Very boring. As you know, most it's cool, and Randy Euro could be common, I doubt it, but here you never know. Nah, I haven't found it very often. So, Randy, what gives you the um, reason to be able to talk to us about personal financial freedom? What do you do? Absolutely nothing, <laughs> which you, is the truth. You make money? I do make money for myself. I have managed to pull that off in my life. Um, but that you, you ask a very key question just to start. People always ask, you know what? In finance, in making money, people are very much aligned to why should I listen to this person? So, you know, for example, um, well, you're a doctor, so, you know, people want to know, okay, you, you, somebody says they're a doctor. Did you go to med school? Can right. I see? Blah, blah, blah. But the funny thing about making money is you can go to school to make money, to learn how to make money. But all the people who have made the most money in the world have not gone a to school. A lot of them to haven't gone it. to school. Yeah, yeah. The majority of them have not gone to school for it. Or a lot of them go to sc- learn to make the money and then they go to school afterwards and continue and so on. Isn't that a weird irony? It is... It is, it's very telling, actually, and it is something that saved me as somebody who did not go to school for it. So I can, I can give you my background if you want. Well, tell me what you studied then, just so that it makes it a bit more well, interesting. Well, well, right off the bat, I'm a, I'm a college dropout, which used to be a bad thing these days. I hear All it's right, a great Kanye, thing. this is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not Kanye, but yeah, I'm looking for Kim. <laughs> but um, Kim yeah, listening to you I right did, now. I did go to, I did go to a UTEC. Um, while I was there, I did do programming as as very much the, the original I used I tell people all the time I'm an OG nerd. Wow. Um, so I learned to code. I love doing that stuff. It was logical. It came naturally to me. Right. Um, and that is the last thing that I went to like proper, proper, proper school for. And that's a long story if we can go into that I can. I mean the short version is I did that. Did it for a few years. That, my first year is a student loans bureau story, which right, I probably right. would want to tell people. So I started out with it, like everybody. I didn't have enough money. I um, came from a nice poor Your family. Your picture didn't make the, make, the, make the paper? 
Uh, no, Thanks I hope God. not, but that has never scared me. <laughs> right. is, trust me, if you see my paper, picture on the paper, I'm a star. It's all good, yeah, eh? man. Oh, no, if it's, even if it's not good enough, I say, boy, it is what it is. Right. It's on the stars I see in the newspaper. So, so you came from Humble Beginnings? Humble Beginnings. Um, did college at the first year. I actually did, I, I worked to pay for my first year of college way back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, for my second year, I got a student's loan, mm-hmm. which was great. For the third year, you know, you have the students on already. You go back and you say, well, you know, I pass all my classes. Here's my transcripts. I'm going to third year. Third year. But how it was, you have to apply every year nonetheless. Right. So, passed my second year, you're going to third year, and you start school. So, I actually started school, and I'm, I have the apply, application, and I'm waiting for them to tell me what's what. I get a letter back halfway through the semester. Sorry, we can't give it to you. Mm. So, I go, you, well, nothing has changed. <laughs> Still living in the same house, same family. Nothing, nothing has changed. Just one year later. No, we appealed it. I mean, long story short, they just never they went through that appeal yet. That and year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, you know, I actually kept that in my heart for a long, long time. I came and angry because then I owed them for the first, the second year. Didn't pay them. Vex and said, no way I'm going to, because I had to drop out. And I had it in part of my, um, in part of my appeal to them, I had said that, you know, I'm not pretending I'm not trying to drink the system. If you don't give me it, I literally cannot pay. Right. So said, so done. So I dropped out. And, uh, so you were forced out in a way. Yeah, due, I was forced out. Uh, yeah, I feel right? bad about that. I remember I was in, by this time it's third year, so it was almost at almost the end. Done. Mm-hmm. I was doing, you know, the final project. That my group that I did that with actually went on to win a prize for that project. I'm so proud of them. Yeah, <laughs> I heard about it afterwards. Oh, yeah, but you know, you it, were a part of it. Ah, uh, yeah, in spirit. <laughs> yeah. But it it was a good experience in that it taught me that you can never plan anytime you don't have the money for yourself it told me that no matter how bright you are no matter how good you are sometimes they say money is everything but money is a lot i think well this is a good segue into how you started to learn about i guess making money and should i ask you to define personal financial freedom first ah uh, define it and then go into how you got there well or I mean, getting for there. me i mean that changes all it changes all the time but it has a, a core i think people human beings on their own the best like we've come up through the thousands of years that we've been around. The idea for man is that he should be above certain things, we, you know, the house, the shelter, and so on. And now we're in a stage where maybe housing shelter isn't that hard to get. Of course, we know house is expensive, blah, blah, right. blah. But you're not, not necessarily, only a very small part of humanity lives on the street, is, is homeless. And we're talking about- Well, in, in Jamaica. Well, so I'm going to say in the Western world and in Jamaica, right. even then, a very tiny percep- per- percent of people are at that. Not saying it doesn't exist, exactly. but mm-hmm. a very small part of people. But what we then do with our time that would have been used to ensure that we're not living on the street is very key. And so most of us end up living to work. Right? You know, we're following, we're following the thing that keeps the money in the pocket. At one point, I found myself working just to be able to pay to go to work. Hmm. Right? And that's a thing that I find a lot of people find themselves in sometimes. And at that point, you kind of have to ask yourself, Am I feeling fulfilled right. or am I trapped? And I think personal financial freedom comes from being able to afford to do what you want with your time. And of course, there are levels to that. I like that you said that, with your time. Because time is really the only thing, right? Now, if, you, if we had a whole more time, I'd go into my theories on money, which money is just time. I'm going to have to bring you back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, but essentially is what you want to do with your time because all our time here is limited. Right. So, I mean, do I want to spend 35 years trying to get to the top of an organization? And then, you know, I'm, I'm in my 70s and was it worth it to be known as the old CEO of blah, blah, blah? Or do I want to spend my mid-20s and 30s traveling the world and getting experience and being happy? Neither of those things are necessarily bad or good. Right. It's, it's depends on what you want. Exactly. And personal financial freedom is the ability to do what you want. And maybe you can't go as far as travel the world, but maybe personal financial freedom is the ability to say, I'm going for vacation this year in, in Miami. Or Dubai. Or Dubai. Or Cancun. I might, can or, do, I might can do Miami, but I can't do Dubai. All right. And you know what? Some people can't do Miami. All them can do is Portland. But big up them too. If you can do Portland. If you can do Portland. Portland, Portland, Portland exactly. Yes. So that's, that's my, why the personal is so important in that financial freedom. In, in every single aspect of finance for me, it starts with personal. Right. And that has been um, one of the things that has really defined how I looked at it. So going back to the story, yes, I dropped out of school, I had to get a job. Um, and then, you know, things kind of flipped. Time became important and where it became that you didn't have, it wasn't that I didn't have enough money to do school. It was more that I didn't have enough time to do school because work took over so much. Mm-hmm. After a while, I found myself working, working, working. And then you find yourself, okay, what am I going to do? What kind of job you were working in? I work for, I, I don't know if I want to say it. Well, it's public knowledge. I, I, work for, I work for careers for a lot of years. Okay. I work for careers for eight years. Um, 
great place to work. And in, in what capacity, given that you hadn't finished the degree? So I started out as the assistant to the IT assistant <laughs> in 2007. <laughs> assistant, yeah, IT man. assistant. Yeah, yeah, IT assistant, help desk assistant. Right. And I moved from that into just IT assistant. And I moved from that into audit, which is, um, at the time, there was a, a prevailing thought. It still happens in corporate a lot of times where people think, have the auditors come from a, pos a place where they're logical? And IT tends to be one of the places that has the logical people, surprisingly. Um, because audit, at its very core, I know the finance people are up in arms yeah, right now. Yeah, somebody's burning something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, but the, the, the audit at its core is, you say your business is X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. I come to you and say, what is your business? You say X, Y, Z. You say, how you make money? You say, I make money by X, Y, and Z. And I say, okay, show me X, show me Y, and show me Z. Right. And, that's if it, that's that's and if it doesn't match, it doesn't match. And if it does match, it matches. Right. Um, and if it don't match, you get lock up. Sometimes, you, you, sometimes, <laughs> or, or you know, so sometimes, <laughs> all, all kind of things. Your name gets in the press, or it has been happening with my friends. You lose friends over it, yeah. Right. <laughs> Recently, but um, so yeah. What was the next step? So you know, working on a job, you're doing IT related stuff, and then I'm and you're working, 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 working. Yeah, working. working all the time, and I get so deep into the corporate world, mm -hmm. which I did, which is is good. It taught me so much. Taught me a lot about people, about money, mm -hmm. and more importantly about myself. Mm -hmm. First, I have to live. Uh, mommy, I'm can brave now. I'm going to get a nice apartment up Chancery Hall, overlooking the city. Yeah, yeah like a car all the time. It's nice. I can go out at night time. Right. Drink, get girl. Come right. on. It was, it was a great life. Um. But still, there's that fulfillment aspect. There's stuff I can't do. No matter how hard I go Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday morning, you need to be back at work. But based on where you were, you would have been more financially free than you were before. Or would you even call this financial freedom at all? Or this is just, I'm working in a job now and it's, I have a salary. It so. is sort of financial freedom. It is definitely more freedom than I had before. Right. right? It wouldn't occur to me. But this is more like personal freedom, not financial freedom, right? Yes. Well, a little of both because I had more money. Gotcha. I didn't have many money before. I had I literally had disposable income. Exactly. I could do things. I could go foreign right. you know, on my own. I, I bought a car. Right. Crash it two months later. Right. right. So you were enjoying uh, this. Yeah, but, and it didn't dent me. Yeah? That was great. And then to be fair, career is notorious for paying well and they do pay well they did pay well at the time when i was there and i and so as a result i'm a young 20 year old guy 2021 20, right. making millions that i never thought i could make right yeah so and you 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 your lifestyle immediately appreciates right which you, you know we'll know later on can be a problem but um at the time yeah, it was great did allow some freedom allow me to taste things i hadn't tasted before you know bits of the world like i said i could travel I went, the first time I travel is not me. Travel, go see a relative is me. Just buy my own ticket. So your salary go. job have cre has create, created a whole b bunch of things that you never had Yeah, before. man. And I, I'll never knock anybody in a job. If, it is, if you feel like it's for you, if you feel like it's for you and you're comfortable and you feel fulfilled there, I don't want to knock it. Because it is a path for some people. So I assume career has ended. So what happened after career? So career has ended funny enough. I, re I read a, a book called... Um, Jonathan Livingston Seagull is a word where people can look it up. It's a very short book. You can read it in like 45 minutes. Seagull? Yeah. Jonathan like, like, Livingston like the Seagull. Bird? Yes. Okay. Like mm -hmm. the bird. It, 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 I mean, it's, it looks like a children's book. It and a book called Le Petit Prince, mm -hmm. The Little Prince, mm -hmm. from France. And both of them speak to almost like a purpose without speaking to your purpose. They look like children's book, but right. they're not children's books. Like the alchemist. That, very much, it, very yeah. much in the same, the same vein as the alchemist. And um, I remember reading it at my desk and realizing, wow, I, am, I cannot stay here. How old were you? At the time, I would have been maybe 27. Okay. So nice. at that point, I'd been seven years in career, seven going eight years in career. Mm -hmm. And I realized, no, this couldn't be it. And because the book helped you identify that this is not your purpose and this is not your passion. This is not yeah. where you should be. You know what it is? I looked at it and I thought, okay, what do I want to do? I've been here seven years. Do I want to keep going? Do I want to go harder at careers? Do I want to maybe go to, you know, try and finish a degree, go and do maybe the MBA, come back and then maybe become a top manager here or for a while they want to become the next managing director of careers let me tell you right. i think so if i'm 10 years in if i'm 10 years in do i want to be another 10 15 20 years in and at that point let's say i am what now in my 50s heading to my 60s am i happy feeling i have put 
25 years into career as limited selling cigarettes well, am i am i happy with myself having done that and by the way they sell tobacco yes every day I've, in the back of my mind i know yeah, my mother killing somebody. I, i'm killing my mother Indirectly. first i'm killing my mother directly first because she don't want her son selling the tobacco blah 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 right, right. um I mean, this, that, that was not a problem for her per se but it, it was always in the back of my mind what um, i should ask you because probably as it relates to my kind of story did you have other passions and other things oh, that completely. you that you loved outside of programming and it so you meaning like you had your side dream of i wish i was like drawing comic books i don't know but something completely what else was going um, um, so I've always liked writing. Mm-hmm. I've always liked writing. I've always liked the creation of, of media. I like art. I, I actually love business. It's a weird thing for me to explain to people. Like I like I like seeing your podcast and knowing that does he know that this podcast is a great product? Does he can make right, right, that right, sort right. of like, thing? Does and he see the, the full potential of this exactly. podcast? Exactly. Right? I can't help it. I look at small things. I'm the guy who goes to a bar. And I'll go to three bars, three different nights, and I can tell you which one is a good bar, and which why? one will last, mm-hmm. yeah, and which one won't last, and what I need to do to be better. I can't help it. it it's in me. So I like business. It comes, it's almost second nature to me. And I've always had that. And of course, that helps because in the business world, you're working, people like that. I analyze things with that in mind, and so you know that helps with the report. And so I moved out of audit after a while. I moved into sales admin. Mm-hmm. I did that for a year and a half. I got promoted again. I went over into marketing and business analysis. I did that for a while, and it was then I started reading the books, and I started feeling less fulfilled, and I started wondering if this is what I really wanted to do. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And I got up on there. And I said, you know what? I, I, I can't do another twenty years of this. I wrote the letter up. I gave it to my boss. I gave it to the MD. You resigned, and they yeah. were upset about it, but you caught. I mean, nice they're kind of upset about it, but no, you, nobody ever, nobody resigned. Nobody leaves careers like that. Yeah? You either get fired or dead. <laughs> so I guess they got it that you needed to move on to other things. I guess so. And and I think that's almost, I described that, I won't say that's when my life started. My life started before that. But what that's were really, you moving on to though? So you had, you had something, you leave something for nothing? Something for nothing. But I trusted myself. And I, I had the understanding that, um, I just feel like if you're intelligent, you and had I, a concept of what it was? That yeah, you I've always had concept. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't blind moving on. I mean, in mm-hmm. my mind, I knew I wanted to do certain things. Maybe there's a little bit of, there's people in my family that have them businesses. Maybe I need help with it. Mm-hmm. And I could go in there. I could help that on my own. I have my own ideas. And of course, I've always been trading stocks. I've been doing stocks from years before. So I don't know that. But you prob- you wanted to be an entrepreneur though? Yes, but in my mind, no. I, w- the, I wanted to be clear that the thing that pushed me away is not wanting to be an entrepreneur. I want to start a business. It's, we might get eight years. Do I want to put two thirds of it into somebody else's corporation? Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Because gotcha. are, you, are you going to be happy at eighty, sitting by the beach and one night? Okay, you know, I did. It was really good for me to spend the first thirty-five years doing what I did. I'm going to take a hop and skip so that we can have you give some tips to wonderful people. But I love your story so far. I want to know what are you doing now? Because <laughs> oh, so I'm sure there's some stuff between. I really don't know what you do now. Oh, what so are you doing right now? So I, I don't talk a lot about my life. No, <laughs> funny enough. Um, I do. I'm a consultant now. So I work with clients, private clients. I know one one of the people I work with, I do a lot of work with, is the lab. Um, I don't know when this will come out, but. I know people know there's an IPO coming. Yes, I do handle yes, a lot so of strategy well, for the lab there. Yeah. Well, is, I, don't, I, yeah. I, won't, I won't put myself right, in any trouble yes. there. Big up Kimala and the IPO coming up. Yeah, man. She, great lady, great company. Yes. So, <laughs> so I, I do a lot of that on my own. I, I was doing stocks back then. I do stocks now and I'll probably do stocks until the day I'm dead. Right. What are you consulting in exactly? So in exactly, it's hard for me to say I'm a strategy consultant, which sounds nice. People for businesses. It, Four businesses, mm-hmm. yes, and big and small. Um, so I will do, the easiest way to say it is almost the same marketing. Marketing strategy is an easy one to explain. It's like we're going to, we want to sell these pens to school children. Mm-hmm. We have two million of these pens. We want to sell them for about $5. What's the best way to get them sold? Of course, a talented marketer can come up with, okay, we can have a nice pen campaign. We'll have, you know, right. a great like ad. A and, visual, they'll come, right? and they come with the visual stuff. Mm-hmm. And the strategist is the person who says, okay, guys, that looks great, but the reality is 80% of pen sales happen in high schools and the other 20% happen in corporate, right. right? So maybe you need to tailor it to corporate and talk about it in September. Maybe we need to run the ads from July to August. That's sort right. of and and the boring. people like blue pens and high school people like red ones. Too. Exactly. So, right, and right. that's a sort, it sounds simple, but, but yeah. that is the sort of thing that can be the difference between a wasted $10 million marketing budget or a very effective $3 million marketing Which budget. Like knowing your audience. All right, so this is yeah. kind of I think that you're good at and that's how you end up fitting into these companies with a wide knowledge of not only business but stocks and exactly I, I like to have a, I, I take a macro view of everything so even when you put a problem in front of me the first thing I look at is okay what do you really want 
where do you want to get it what is the what is the space that you're playing in and how is the best what do i see as the best way to get you from point a where you are to point b where you want to be it's very i hate how intangible it is yeah, but explain. it's what it is, right? Yeah, but it is, it is key when you get it. All right, so there is an important middle. So you have your basis from your salary job. You have what you do now as a consultant. Mm -hmm. But you must have been gathering knowledge about stocks and how to buy them and, and stuff. How did you gain that knowledge? So that knowledge I gained, as of, that's a funny story. So that is long before all of this. So mm -hmm. when I remember my parents moved from Kingston to Spanish Stone in, I want to say, between second and third form. Yeah. So I mean like 2000 thereabouts. And uh, I remember I, it was such a hard thing doing the journey back and forth for a little while. I stayed with my uncle mm -hmm. and he traded stocks at the time. To pinpoint a date, JMB had just launched the money line. So for the stock people listening, they can go back and check whenever the year was that it, it was a fresh thing. It was, and the internet was still new in Jamaica. Right. So yeah. I'm at his the house. Would be new yeah. So, so I'm, I'm at his house and I'm seeing him doing this. And I remember the time Kevin Wallace was trading and I was looking at some things and I'm watching the, you know, the Owen James on TV and I'm seeing this and... I look reading it and I say, I see some things that to me make sense. I don't know if it makes sense or it don't make sense. I say, he asked me a fat tip and I say, buy the cable and wireless. I mean, they weren't lying by the time. They'd have been CWJ. Yeah, what I mean. I CWG. say, yeah, buy the CWJ. And by the time I had left his house, meaning the time I'd staying with him, by the time I left his house, it had doubled mm -hmm. in price. And I think he had put like a million dollars in. So, and it was now two million. Wow. Blew my mind. The third form by that then. So what? A million dollars just so? Double so. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it stuck in my mind. And ever since then, I have always just... For, I don't, it's hard for me to explain how I do it because I don't see it as... I, I don't keep up with like the stuff. I just, I, re, I just watch the news like everybody else. I read. And you see yeah. something coming out. Yeah, I hear people decision, talk. Yeah, I drink with decision. people. I drink with people and then and talk. And it comes up, yeah. And people saw... I, but the, the thing that I've always been good at is finding the link between two things that people think aren't necessarily linked. I remember when Lasco did iCool. At the time, I was at Carrera still, I think, and I was doing an audit for something else. I was on the road a lot. Mm -hmm. I kept seeing these little bottles on the road everywhere I was driving around the whole island. Right. I kept seeing these little bottles everywhere I go. I said, buy one at a shop one time, because you talk to people, you develop a rapport when you're on the road. I buy one and tell me, oh, the new iCool thing, man, from Lasco. Lasco. Yeah, yeah, man. Jamaicans love Lasco. And yeah. I look at Lasco price, and I say, wait, I don't say any mention of this per se. I say, them say them launch it, but but this product the way is I look, everywhere across the island. I buy immediately. Right. Two quarters in here, Lasco, I go sales, boom. At the time, Wisinko was a listed company. I heard from all people saying, Wisinko said, I'm under pressure because I cool sales really giving them a, a warm time, you know? I go, wait, this is a big so deal. So you were just being very observant. And that's so, all I've ever so been. So right now, you're talking about even spotting a good stock or a good IPO just by kind of keeping the ears to the ground. Completely. All I do is look at what is happening, regular things that people do, and... I, I take a position on that. No, it's not as simple as saying everybody has a, a cell phone, so if they just sell list, they're going to the well, right? right. It, it, it can be a little deeper than that, but it can also be like if there is a new product from these new people and you see it really flying, you know, boy, this makes sense, right? Uh, Jetcon is a nice example of that. Jetcon listed maybe two or three years ago. Yeah. When Jetcon was coming out to the market, I remember talking to my expert friends, because I always have friends who are experts, and I asked them about it, and they're like, boy, use car. I remember one specific friend, tell me, say, don't put your money in that, that's a waste of money, we're all drinking, out talk, right? At the end of the light, night, we all left, and every single one of us went in our used cars, and drove home in the car, in the traffic, full of used cars. Right. And I, right. I text you, and I say, that, think about sure it. About that? That I say, no sense, I right? say, exactly, right? But I, and it's one of those things that look sensible in hindsight, but at the time, when, when the experts talking to you, it made sense in the moment. But the, we don't have no space for you guys now. We don't even have anywhere to put them. Exactly. I can assure you And they're this. still bringing them in. Oh, of course, because you know what? They're selling. Yeah. Because yeah. people want cars that are inexpensive. And people leave college. They get the job. Even if it's a BPO job, they yeah. work there for two years and they can make, if they can find bits, 25, grand, oh, okay, 25 yeah. grand a month, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And so anybody who's selling, that's going to make money. Simple things like that are who I learned to do it. So oh. I started in high school. Yeah. Stuck with it. Um, I don't say like I've been doing it every year. Right? Some years I'm not doing it, but I've always paid attention to it. If you're watching the news, I watch the business part of the news, too, just like I watch everything else. You come on right before the sports. Randy, you know what you are? You're the stock whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> Some people might say that. Some people might say that. All right. So I'm going to ask you a question, which is, which is good because I guess you can knock it down. So to get financial freedom, mm -hmm. 
does it rely heavily in any one category? And I have some categories and you can dispel them. So earning, savings, acquiring assets, expenses. And I'm asking it this way because it means that if I earn as little as $20,000, maybe I can get the financial freedom if I just don't spend any money. Mm-hmm. So is it really about how much you save or is it just a combination of everything? So tell me your view on this and then we can go right. into different categories Category. as you want to lead them. Um, all right, so I know that the... the TV answer that I'm supposed to give to be safe is that it's a mix mix of everything and uh, it's not. Um, Probably the most important thing is your expense management. Expense management. Yeah, man. You you, you can't, it's like the gym. They say you can't out exercise your fork. Uh, no, yeah, you uh, can never uh, work out uh, enough. You can always eat more than you can work right. out. If you're not um, burning more than you're putting in, then you'll yeah. always be fat. Same thing with it. If as you get the raise, you spend the raise. If as you get the raise, the first thing you do is you go with your friends and drink. Then it's a wrap. What, you, what you've done is you've created an expectation in your own mind. Your friends find that, listen, you just get a promotion, we can go. The next party invite, you can't say, no, but you just get a promotion. Right. And that lifestyle thing sets in. So I think expense management is probably the most personally it, when I say personal, I don't mean for me, although it is for but me for too. Everybody, for everybody, right? yeah. Like for the person who wants to get there, the first thing you have to know is to manage your expenses. Because keeping your expenses low will keep your surplus higher. That's right. I don't have to be low. Just keep it manageable. Keep compared it, to what you're compared earning. Compared to what you're earning, yeah. The second thing, of course, is you have to earn. Right. So uh, let's talk about your income streams on your journey right now. And we don't have to go <laughs> into um, numbers. We just want to go, um, um, categories of income. So you have your consulting. So I do consult and I'm paid for that. You um, have your stocks. I have, I have investments. So there's investments in stocks and I also invest in other things. I invest in things that's not on the market. Mm-hmm. I'll invest in, I invest, <laughs> I invest in Alco Bar. Right. I invest in a, in a stall at the side of the road if I think the person is good enough. So you might like walk by a seat and be like, yo, this is a good. I ask to speak to the owner. You just go in there and talk All to the them. time. If I always buy here. Always buy at a corner shop. Right. Always there. And Good people always lady. in there. Mm-hmm. Always Lady Manor. You know my mother from a long time, blah, blah, blah. Right. You think look like it really can set up. And you maybe need a little bit of lights and somebody can come paint up the place. And because, and, and this is where you start applying that knowledge, because as a career as, I know what they call them FMCGs, fast moving consumer goods. I know what those companies will do. I know that those companies, if you ask them, will come in and paint your shop. Of course. And, and paint and it with what the logo. they put in Craveny on the outside. I don't mind because you just need a paint. A, a, a and they sell paint more. And they sell more. And they sell more. And they come around every week for the round robin, and they give you a little bit of sample, and they come with a noise and a string up, and suddenly Miss Mavis shop make a little bit more and money. And she's happy. And she's happy. Careers is happy. And and she's also happy because on the back end, I'm saying Miss Mavis will can't just do the thing off or put the money under the, the the mattress anymore. Now we have to put on a sheet, and we're going we're going to record first everything that we buy. Then we're going to record every little thing that we sell. And so Miss Mavis has an idea of how much money she make last month for the first so time in 23 being, years. being organized, yeah. And she sees the value of it. And what's more, I say, you know, you can now carry this, the profit and loss day. But you see, as long as I don't say p and profit and loss day, I mean, nobody thinks it's high finance. Right. But one, it's high finance at any level. But one, yeah, and high finance, at, again, I know the analysts are going to be very angry. High finance is not very complicated. Right. I shouldn't say right, it's not right. very complicated. None of business is very complicated. From, and as a Jamaican, we have an unfair advantage because the whole of we learn business very early. Very early, right? Spend less than you make. Try and make as much as you can. Do something stupid to jeopardize the whole thing and put away a little piece all the time. That's the pretty much the summary of it all, right? Leeching has a thing he causes eight rules, blah, blah, blah. It come right back down to that. He's only a little more fancy. He right. owes other people money, blah, blah, but it's the same thing. All right, since we're already touching on expenses, um, how can we cur- curtail our desire to, to spend? And like, what kind of thing should people really not rush to spend on? Or is that, is that a rough thing to say to somebody? It can be a rough thing to say to somebody, but it, it's necessary in some cases. Um, Maybe we have to create an example. You know what? Know. No, I'll give you the two examples, which will cut across it. With Jamaica, the Jamaican dream is... Is to, is to live the American dream. <laughs> oh, wow. the, the, the Jamaican dream really is house, car, and enough girl. Right, right. right. All three of those things can be very expensive. What about, what about the woman? <laughs> house, car, enough girl. <laughs> enough man? Women do that too? That is, but you know what? That is oh, true. One, I was being very... No, you're oh, right. You're oh, right. One. You're right. Women tend... What that's why women are better at money in Jamaica. You notice right. that? Because they don't have... Man. Them don't think house... House car and enough man. man and even enough and the man, man them don't say then the man them must supply them with money something I can't too. say that that was that was Dr. <laughs> Mario <laughs> Yvonne yeah, who was saying that. Trying to avoid that yeah if they have enough man they, they provide certain roles I said it come at me and I think you're right because I don't know one any. might be sexual one yeah. might be financial yeah. one might be for the child but yeah I don't know any woman, woman that's taking up a man that's not bringing them any benefits <laughs> in their life yeah them. man that is true even if it's love 
Even if it's love. Right. And love can be very expensive. Okay. Any way you put it, can be <laughs> yeah. very expensive. All right, so you're going back to our example now. So, so my example is this for everybody. The Jamaican um, dream. Yeah, house, car. Now, the house, we, can all, we, we know how expensive that is. Right. But if you think about it, people will put the first 10 years of their working life into trying to buy a house. After they've paid, paid for their student loan, if they have one. If they have one, the house not going to come so quick. If they buy the house, they're going to be in a house. That's how people get house broke. Right. That's why you have a friend who wouldn't buy the apartment. They're happy for them that the house warming. You don't see them after the no, house they warming. They can't go anywhere. They can't go anywhere for the next three years. Right. Not necessarily a bad thing if you're fine with that. Like, I'm a homebody. So you're good with that? Yeah, man. You make the money and stay Yeah, home. man. I'll stay home or I'll... I'll because I'll, I never I, saw you before the day I saw you on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and a lot of people don't see me. I don't go to a lot of places. So right. I do go out and I'm very low-key. I, I like having fun. I like going to one place with my friend corner. and stay in the mm-hmm. corner. Have fun and leave. Yeah, yeah, man. People know me though. Ask Khadija about me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I do, I do a, a good party. I'll go to good things. I go to, but that's what people need yeah. in terms of I spend. I'm not saying to anybody that I spend is a bad thing. And house on the cars. But I'm choose about your here. spending carefully. Map your spend. Everybody now can do. If you can have the Excel, write it on a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. Work out what the monthly payments on the car is. And that's everybody does that. That's step one, you know. But it's budgeting one on one, right? But we need to go to step two. Mm-hmm. Work out what the insurance on the car is, work out the licensing on the car is, and work out servicing on the car, and then divide all of that by 12 and add it to the monthly car payment. Right, because we're leaving out a lot of our expenses, and, and that's where we fail, right? And those expenses, the funny thing about money is, you know, and budgeting, you don't, even if you don't pay attention to it, it doesn't right. make it less real. Right. I cannot budget this month, but the spend is still there, and if I spend the wrong way, it comes out of my pocket the same way. So people need to be very, very aware of the expenses. Any major expense, I would, I can't put a number. I don't want to say 100 grand or 200 grand. Right. But any major recurring expense. I'm glad you said recurring because I had some that kept creeping up on me. But after a while of adulting, you started to get used to the yes, man. tax time around my Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, you start working. Car insurance, things. you have a property tax if you have a property. And mm-hmm. they keep coming every year. Every single year. And you have to look on it and go, okay. But you don't I remember okay? them sometimes, but they come up. You have to remember them, which is the thing. It, or sometimes you avoid it for a long time, but the <laughs> government remembers. And when they remember, <laughs> their memory is long. The government remembers. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> so for me, I tell people to always look on the recurring expenses. Right. Look on your income now and think, how much of this am I willing to continue to? Imagine you're doing for the next 20 years. I hear people buying cars now on almost 10-year loans. Right, like, no. 10 and plus. Some, p- some places offering all 12 years on a car. And, and with that information then you can choose what kind of disposable income things you can do right yes but the truth is we don't make our very 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 few people and i'm not one of them either make our decisions on disposable income purchases based on, based on financing mm-hmm. no i don't decide whether or not i go in a just party want to go a movie and yeah go. i just want mm-hmm. to go i just want this no i just do it well i'll decide if i'm going to frenchman or i'm going to mass camp and those are two very different decisions okay. so that's when i can make there easily i'm like are you going to frenchman no 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 mass yeah. camp maybe i can't pull that uh, you say no 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 but then if five people ask you for the week and you sure you're not going mario and the whole other girl i'm asking you and then boy one time in a random, one time, yeah. but not, not now. Yeah. Yeah. I become that friend who stays inside when they need to stay inside. I've become That's that a good dude. friend. That's right. a good friend. I, you know what I like about those friends? Those are the friends who say, you know what? Those are the friends who have nice homes because they spend so much time there. <laughs> so that, no, we don't just buy some liquor and come over. Right, right. The smart oh, ones. Yeah, very, very, very not, smart. One, they're not buying a the liquor. They yeah. have the nice home and you get to bring the liquor exactly. to their home. Exactly, exactly. And if you stay like me, next time you come, you never carry on. No, with a buckle, I'm leave us. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, that that's the idea. Look out for the recurring expenses and always remember this with your income. Put a little piece away. I am not the person to tell people to save. I don't believe in saving you personally. Don't believe in saving? But that's a technical chance I don't believe in saving because I do invest heavily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't consider if you take twenty grand out of your paycheck every month and right. invest it, I don't call that saving, but it is saving. Let's talk about investment then. Um, what are some of the things you encourage people to invest in and in what volume, quantity? You know, how do you decide what you can manage? So we have a new subject or IPO coming out. Mm-hmm. This man turned me into a subject. I know, I'm sorry to throw it there, but you know, I mean, I don't know podcasts will last forever. So somebody will hear this five years later. Mm, and and say, you know, you, didn't you say? But when they hear, hear this five years later, maybe that IPO might be selling for $100 per stock. Who knows? But, mm, um, mm, mm. It yeah. should be selling for a lot more. Uh, you see, the whisperer. 
that's yeah. big, right? No, that was, uh, that's right, not right, to say to buy, right, but yeah. Sorry, what should we be plugging p- p- companies? But anyway, this is no, man, plug my them, podcast. Man. I can do whatever the hell I want. That's true. Plug them, because maybe they'll come to you for an ad. This, you, you should pull ad revenue right now very, very easily. Wow, well, Randy, you yeah. have a feeling we're going to become <laughs> friends now. But I don't know if I can afford you, but I'm oh, going to put some money right. aside <laughs> to pay you. That's fine, consult. that's fine. All right, but all right. So what should people invest in? All right. Um... Your investments, just like everything, as I said, everything in finance starts with you personal. Yeah. Um, right now, stocks are hot. I hate saying that. Stocks have always been hot and they'll always yeah, be hot. Yeah, they were always hot. But they have a lot of hype around them now. IPOs I, are hot. IPOs are hot because a lot of people are coming to market, which is good, which is good. Um, I think people should invest in, in stocks, of course. Um, in this, I am probably the most unorthodox person I know, so... Mm-hmm. First, let me start by saying I'm not an investment advisor, people. So, right. no, and nothing I say here is investment advice. This is not investment advice. Dr. Mario Yvonne <laughs> is a doctor, as you can hear. He's not a financial I'm advisor. Not, I'm not. This. And neither am I. But here are my personal thoughts. Um, my personal thoughts are that people right now should think about what it is that they want for themselves. If you know that you have the time right. to check the JSC website, First of all, I have a blog, everymickle.com. Spell exactly what it's on, E-V-E-R-Y. And let me plug myself. Thank you. Yes, please plug yourself. <laughs> E-V-E-R-Y-M-I-C-K-L-E. I think if you spell it incorrectly, you'll still get here. If you, M-I-K-K-L-E is probably me too. You and probably. every muckle is also me too, but it's everymickle.com. Because you, you own them all. They own them all, right? Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. I'll Don't sense. worry, I hold, yeah. I hold, I hold the domains as well. But <laughs> so, everymickle.com, mm. go there. You can learn from me. Start, I have a... I have an article on that site that's called I Don't Save and You Shouldn't Either. And that's a great article to start with because it explains what I mean when I say I don't save. It's not that I don't actually save, but I think that people should earn and you definitely should put a section of your earnings away. Right. And you should put into something that will give you the safest growth, the safest growth, but the safest, largest growth towards your goal. Complicated as which, which could be anything, or is there are there specific things that always cause you, that? You, you, you define decide. your goal. So, for example, for me, I'll tell you this when I started seriously because I've started and stopped on stocks, but I've always paid attention. Mm-hmm. So, and as a career, as about let's say, oh, 20, maybe 2010 or 09, before then, 08, 09, when I started to get some money, I say, yeah, let me put something away, I'm not into the saving. I'm a goal saver. If I want a nice chair, how much a chair costs, I will right. save towards it. And I'm going to spend it the second I reach there, right? Knowing me, I'm going to spend it when I reach halfway there on the credit card and then use the money on the credit right, card or right, right? Right, right? I'm impatient. But people, people te- need to know that it's your goal that defines a lot of these things. So your goal, if it's that you want to go to Dubai later this year, and you know Dubai, all right, I need to have put 200 So you should work backwards then. So figure out Always how much work backwards. It, exactly. And that's just kind of, same with the expenses in a way, in terms of your document, all like every single expense, so you have a good idea of your entire expense. Mm-hmm. So if you want to take a trip, same thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you know the plane, the plane ticket, the hotel. Exactly. A little extra. Extra. Yeah. extra. And you have, spending all, money. you have the total. Exactly. And, you work, and you work backwards. And then for me, the only thing that investing does for me is it says, okay, let's say I have 100 grand. I want to go to Dubai in December. Mm. And I know that to do that, I need to have 250 grand. That means that my 100 grand has to grow by, I don't want to sound dumb on the radio, has to grow by 150%. Right. How am I going to make that happen? Well, so you then, that's now when I look and say, okay, what investments can give me 150% in six months? I don't like to do the six months thing, but let's say one year. Yeah. What, and even then, 150% is crazy. Mm-hmm. But what investments are going to give that me you that? Are investments that you already have. Well, no. Or not. A, a, that, that exists in the market. Right. So if you look in the market and you see, um, you know, a, no, I won't call any company names, right, but yeah. some, a bank might offer you 5% fixed deposit. A credit union might say 8% fixed deposit. And then you might look on another thing and they're saying, you know, our mutual fund has given 30% in the last three years. You say, okay, well, 30% looks a lot bigger. And that's when you start realizing what's in the market versus what you want and you have to mix and match. Sometimes you have to compromise, but that's literally how it goes. Put it all together in your budget and then work backwards. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, stocks are the only game in town because stocks allow me to make the money quickly or right, sometimes right. long. Sometimes I can invest for long. So for example, people, here's a free tip, people. <laughs> sometimes you want, you, you can't afford a pension. They say, I think maybe 20% of Jamaicans have a pension. It's a very small, small number. Right. Yeah, that they have a pension. You can't afford a pension, but you can afford five, maybe $10,000 every month. Buy some NCB stock and leave it and call it your pension. I assure you that in 30 years, that NCB stock is going to be worth 
probably as much as your pension is worth right if not more Very likely more and that wonderful um stock exchange side shows you well, you can set it up to show you what you've purchased, when you purchase it, what you purchase it for. So you can see the percentage increase. There you so go. So you can just have it set up. And, and in case you don't thing. know it, you have it a bunch of places. I have a little dashboard on the same everymickle.com that yeah. I made specifically for that. You put in how much you've bought, you put in when you buy it, and every day you can just press refresh and, you and it shows it. you how much it's worth. So you can know when to sell. You might double. All, All right. the time, which is very possible, but I don't promise people things like that because, you know, you like to be careful and I don't try to put people at, oh, I don't want anybody to think it's a lot of, they, exactly. If they don't want to be. Exactly. All right. I feel like the beautiful part about this podcast, even though we've spoken about a lot of things, is that in a way you've kind of answered your, how we get to financial freedom. And you had a little rule. You see, your rule is, you remember your rule, how you said it? Which one In is terms that? of um, leaving a little, that, that sentence about leaving a little and saving this and I don't remember what it was. But <laughs> Oh, it, it's probably about always leaving a little bit of it. Because there's rules of thumb. People are like, you know, you should always save 30% of your, your Right. Paycheck. You believe in that? If you can do it, yes. It's a great thing if you can do it. 30%. Goes the reality to go to what? Yes, people actually work that out. It, it, it's kind of hard. It's it goes hard. 30% goes to savings, so, quote okay. unquote, or yeah. to investment? People are like, you should always pay yourself first, which usually means save first or invest first. Right. Um, your housing cost shouldn't pass 30% is one rule of thumb. Mm. But imagine if you're making 120 grand after tax. Right. 30% of that, you're looking on, what's that, $36,000. As rent, yeah. So if you if you're at thirty six grand for rent, people are like, wow, that maybe not my rent is fifty grand. Right. You can't pull down your rent, so something else. Some I, I use those rules as rules of thumb, mix and match for yourself. But I will say this: it, put something away. How much should people put away? And in a rule, what is the rule for savings? My personal rule: mm-hmm. as much as you can. And I, again, not say but invest, but putting the money into something that mm-hmm. is going to make you some money in the future or protecting the future. Yeah, as much as you can. Which means, and again, I know a lot of people don't like this, but I'm serious. If you can put, if you live with your parents still, don't rush and get the rent. Stay home and pretend that you're paying 30 grand in rent and put that 30 grand in your bank account every month. Gotcha. Yeah, put as much away as you can because nothing is as good as the money already in your hand Mm -hmm. and you spend it, getting it back is hell. Let's talk about some miscellaneous things. Um, Is it cheaper to be single or in a relationship with (laughs) joint income? Touch on that for me. It depends on the partner. <laughs> Very good. Because your partner might not be partner, pulling yeah. anything. You might just pretty much be alone. You know what? Um, if you're a guy, that's a very real thing for you, right? Because if you think about it culturally, as men, we're raised to, we want to find the best girl and then we have to take care of her. You can't pick up the hot girl out of the road and treat the people in the water. So you're bad. pretty much paying for two. Once in a almost always. Yeah. Almost always. I, you know, I realized that in 07, I was in, I was in, I've thought about this since 07 because I was in a relationship with somebody who I won't name. No. <laughs> but <laughs> she's married now. She, right. But, but uh, I was in a relationship with her and we broke up. And it's so funny. We broke up. You know, you ever seen that ad about, baby, I have something to tell you? And she's like, I have something to tell you too. And I said, you go first. So it wasn't quite like that, but I had something to tell her, but it was a surprise. Right. She had something to tell <laughs> she me too. She was breaking up with you. So her thing was terrible. And my thing was that I want us to go to Florida and I've, pay, I've put down the money for your ticket. Right. So when we, bro- we broke up and she didn't know that. She's never known. I've never said it to her. Wow. And when we broke up, I was like, wait her. I'm like 150 grand. Are we going to give this girl 150 grand? I spend, I braff that money. So <laughs> <laughs> if I tell you, I know what I do with it, I, I'd be lying. But right. it taught me very quickly how much in relationships, especially as men, we learn that we have to put down for two. But as I grew older, I also learned that the right partner won't uh, it can cause some controversy the right partner won't be expecting you to put down for two but the right partner helps you to put down a lot more got you yeah right. man things work better with the right partner so I, who, which one is better to be in a relationship or single it depends on the partner it depends on the partner so if you're single which i always all of my examples are i start with people single because i think it's kind of unfair to expect people to to be married first like i have a problem with mortgages in jamaica right the calculation i start with you and your wife or you and your husband I'm like, so, I, so i can't buy a house on my own right I think that people should be able to do it on their own. Um, with the right partner, though, both of you saving, both of you putting. Right now, Jamaica is set up for the, the group up thing. In fact, two, three, I'm not saying partners, not sexual or remote romantic partners. Right. But if it work, it work. I saw something on IG that there where these three people seem to have a great time together. And that is a powerhouse if all three of them can be contributing to the money. Well, I saw it too. I hope so. I <laughs> hope, I hope all of them are pulling something in. Our homeboy is not just floating those. Boy, <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Or too. maybe they're floating him. Who knows? That, that, you know, if he's doing that, more power to him. More power yeah, to him. More power to him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, finding the right partner and both of you working towards the same goal is almost a cheat code and the right 
I'm speaking for myself here. For me, the right woman has always, whenever I've been in a, a good relationship, the right one has always helped me to do better in everything. If it's as simple as washing the dishes all the time or just I do less stupid things because I think eh, I'd rather not. And then sometimes you keep yourself out of trouble. It, 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 the option is easy if you can just go more good link your girlfriend instead of go do some foolish sort of road. Sometimes. I concur. Sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. All right. So, all right. So a supportive partner who can actually see the greater goal, the greater goal of, yes. of, of both of you see yes. together. Yes, and then both of you coming together, the earning power is almost always better. So if you're going for anything, as mentioned mortgages before, if they tie together the earning power for mortgages, then both of you can be good. Um, and if they tie, and if you tie together the fact that you, when you live together, two people living together spend less than two people separate, use less. The, the, usually, the utilities are less than if two people live separately. Right. The, I mean water is less food is less it, the, the things don't go by double when two people live together they go by maybe 1.8 or 1.7 interesting yeah that little difference there can be the different you you might be broke and your girlfriend broke but together you have just enough to start investing in stocks and that little investment in stocks might be the thing that's really what you need yeah man all right Ronnie, here's what i'm gonna ask you to do i know i'm gonna have to bring you back i want you to just give me some final words before i went i'm going to i'm going to wrap this but we're going to bring you back for part okay. two. This has to be a two-part series because okay. this is, <laughs> tell me some final words for this part. Uh, for this <laughs> part, I mean, part one, I, I tell people like, where we are right now, uh, oh, who am I? I'm, I mean, I'm a regular guy. I know, I know sometimes I'm too happy because he has a big bad wolf. I'm not a big bad wolf. I know I come across that way sometimes. It's a learned thing. You guys don't see what happens in my DMs sometimes. People right. are very, very mean and people have an expectation of me that I don't always, I'm not always cool with. Um, and I, I think, if I can leave you with this thing, is understand where you are financially mm -hmm. in your journey. And that might be as simple as just writing on the budget. It doesn't have to be Excel. It can be on a piece of paper. If you can't do it yourself, ask a friend. There are lots of sites out there. When you come back, I'll mention a couple of the sites and the people I know who have them um, locally too. Uh, save as much as you can. I hate saying that, but I call saving investing. Put some of your money away every month. Mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid of anything financial. Those guys that wear suits do not know a lot more than you do. If, and and the, the poorer you are, which means the more in the streets you've had to be, which means you have a lot more mm, in the streets and sensible knowledge than you think. So the best business are. people are almost as good as cultural people downtown. Yeah. The, the people don't know a lot more about business, but they just don't know that they know it, yeah? yeah. And they don't use the fancy terms. Don't make enough terms for it. But they're doing the same thing. And the thing I can tell you is, the most important thing for people who walk in into like a financial institution for, for, for advice or anything, don't be afraid to ask them to explain any single thing. Once they do, you're good. Yes, sir, Randy. All right. Those are wonderful words. I definitely have to bring you back for part two. I think I may no have problem. to do this back to back for real. So I have to see if I can record again because I have so much more to ask you. Nope. But um, thank you again for being here and talking to you. It was a lot of fun and definitely very informative. So I, I hope, hope people so. pull something from it. I hope so. I hope so. All right, boys. Thank you for listening to part one of Personal Financial Freedom with Randy T. Rowe. And tune in next week so you can hear the rest of our conversation on so many cool things around personal financial freedom. And as always, you know what you need to do. Follow me on Twitter at TalkTruthJA and follow me on Instagram at Mario Evan. That's M-A-R-I-O-E-V-O-N. And please review, rate, and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or whichever app that you're using and I haven't gotten a review in a while. So please, where are you guys? Are you listening? No, I know you're listening because I get awesome feedback from you every week. So please give the podcast a review. And one thing I haven't said is that we can listen to this on YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Mario Evan. So if you're a YouTuber and you prefer to consume on that side, I encourage you to go over to YouTube. And when you share, please use the hashtags TalkTruthJA and hashtag MeTalkTruth. And you know what? TalkTruthJA.com is our website. So you can go there to see the show notes and get little pointers and details from the from today's show, which includes stuff like the books, links to the books, and um, other cool stuff. So yeah, guys, another one in the can. Next week, Sunday, we'll complete our talk with Randy Rowe. And as usual, we we'll always love it. Talk Truth! A place where your truth shall become your power and set you free. Until next Sunday, blessed love. Later.